Next question in the same vein. Why do human beings enjoy the sound of birdsong? Mm. No, I love this question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think this one is, it's, let's put it this way. The first order answer is easy. We look for proxies for productivity. Why do you find a particular valley beautiful and another one inhospitable? That's going to tend to correlate to how likely you are to be able to find things that your ancestors might have eaten there or to grow things that your ancestors might have grown there. So um, you can imagine that we could have all kinds of creatures function as like an omen that says, yes, this is the spot. And the yes, this is the spot creature is just one that tends to be seen in places that are good and doesn't tend to be seen in places that are bad. So uh, this is probably wrong. Um, but one thing that occurs to me is that one of the leading hypotheses for why primates experienced an adaptive radiation when they did, uh, which is, um, you know, they, the, the earliest primates existed before the KT boundary, before Chicxulub hit uh, what's now the Yucatan, it's about 65 million years ago, 66 million years ago, um, but that we really expanded quite a bit afterwards, uh, and that this was... Um, the expansion was, yes, about the opening of niches as all the non-avian dinosaurs were now out of the way, um, but one of the hypotheses also has to do with the coevolution of angiosperms, of flowering plants. Mm -hmm. uh, and, if, and because primates are um, largely like songbirds, uh, frugivores or many songbirds are, are pollinators as well, um, but frugivores or insectivores, the insects themselves um, being uh, effectively Radiated frugivores. In to yeah, so if all, if all of these, th basically if, if primates uh, were in part co-evolving along with angiosperms, the flowering plants, I suspect, although I know much less about how we've mapped uh, songbird evolution, so songbirds is a, is a real group, it's passerines, it's a real evolutionary group, I suspect that they also experienced an adaptive radiation with angiosperms, with flowering plants, because how could they not? They're mostly eating the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's possibly that primates and songbirds are both sort of mapped on to the same moment in plant evolution, and that um, if we were all uh, adaptively radiating at the same time, we would have come to um, basically have our aesthetic at a most fundamental level uh, be that with whom we were evolving at the same time, although not exactly co-evolving, because we aren't dependent on songbirds for the most part. They aren't big enough to, for us to be eating them, um, and they're mostly birds and mammals are eating different seeds, have different toxins, different preferences. Um, but it, it, it could have been a sort of emerging uh, life at the same time uh, and as such, as such a shared vision of, of beauty. Yep. Um, I mean, there was a lot in that explanation. I like it. Uh, it, it's it seems... a, like I said, it's probably wrong because there's too, it hinges on too much at some level, mm. but I'm cautiously betting in favor of it. All right. And I would say that the, you know, you really, at the end, it's just basically then songbirds are a proxy for a productive angiosperm mm -hmm. ecosystem in which plants are paying to have their seeds distributed. Yeah. And that's likely to be a good place for people. Yeah. Yeah. I love that question. More questions like that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs>